Good morning. We're going to give everybody a few more minutes to be able to come on in. Um, I heard from the Spiffy Spire folks, and they are going to be a little teeny bit late, so we all have a little bit of time to be able to get in here. So, greetings. Good morning, folks. We are holding for a hot minute because the uh, Spiffy Spire folks are kind of the, the ones that kind of we need this morning, so. Yeah, okay. I, I see thumbs up, so like you can at least hear me, so well done. Okay, game on. <laughs> I'll hold for another two minutes. Um, if I don't see them dropping on in, um, what, from there we'll go towards being able to talk about like projects currently in voting, what's currently happening in here, um, because that's really a nice way to be able to pull stuff together. So, uh, Amy, uh, yeah. who was the sponsor for Spiffy Spire for incubation? Do you remember? Oh goodness, let me go look. Um, uh, that is not data that I keep in my head, unlike all of the other data that I keep in my head. Let me go look it up. <laughs> I assumed it was. <laughs> I, I mean, <laughs> there's a lot in there. Let me go take a look. I know yeah. it's written down somewhere. Was it me? It was. It was in fact yeah, you. I had to go I look was, it up. Yes, I was just thinking. I just, I remember. I remember doing it now. Yes. <laughs> okay, Justin, you are on the spot then. <laughs> no, that's fine. I mean, like it, this was in fact like a couple of years ago, and and a lot has happened since then. So I understand. Yeah. Um. Okay. Andrew's also here from the uh, Spiffy Spire, like folks. Um. Uh. Yeah. And Andres, uh, let me know that he's running a little bit late this morning. So. Um, but that, that is actually good to remember as far as like, ah, yeah, no, Justin, Justin Cormack, we, we might actually like call on you more directly. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, I'm going to actually move us over towards the projects that are currently, um, in like, you know, as things are moving around, but welcome, you have made it. This is our normal antitrust policy notice. This is our normal meeting logistics pieces because you are here, you have made it to this particular meeting, well done. Our TOC members are currently tracked up here. 
And in fact, we do have quorum today if we wanted to be able to do something, but it's so much better to do it by email, so please don't. Um, this is our agenda, and I'm going to move us towards the projects applying to move levels first in here um, for general updates, general comments, anything else running around. And Justin Cormack, I will pass to you, and Toto is currently in voting. Yep, and Toto is in voting. Um, Seven sure. out of 11 on that one right now, so. Ah, vote if you haven't. Correct. Harry, passing to you on Chubau. Where are we on Chubau? Oh, thank you, Elena. So, so we have finished the the diligence doc for Chubau FS. Um, I filled overall that project already. So, uh, I will send out all the materials I have. Uh, oh, including the end user interview, of course. So, I will send all the material in the Slack channel to let all everybody to take a look. If we feel it's great, and then I feel it's safe. We actually uh, to put Chubo FS for public common period. So this is the current status. We are very promising here. Nope, that is splendid. Um, Chaos Mesh. Oh, oh sorry, Cloud Custodian. Uh, if I've got Ricardo on the line. Okay, I don't. So we will move on to Chaos Mesh in voting. They are currently past the vote. So we're just really waiting on the uh, the team to be able to help like make a PR happen, um, press releases happen, not pull requests. Uh, Volcano just hit public comment, and that is also a Ricardo project. So Elena, I will pass to you on Kubevert. It should change the slide for public comment. I just haven't refreshed them. Yeah, Kubevert is, uh, is in public comment period, and I do believe that we are hitting two weeks more tomorrow. But Amy, I'll, I'll rely on you. OK. I'm going to go double check on all of that because there's a lot running around. Um, but thank you for the update. Captain. Uh, finally got going on that. So just starting the, the review process. And um, I plan to have some feedback into the DD document um, by the end of the week or early next week, over the weekend probably. And uh, then I'll be scheduling interviews. So I might be coming your way. All right. That is perfect. Thank you. Um, K Native, currently in voting. I currently have seven out of 11 as of before this meeting. Okay. You, should, you should say the official voting, right? Yeah, the official voting one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, official voting, like now in official voting, all good things will come together. And um, we have Liz Rice's backstage, which we will be looking for a new sponsor when we hit the end of public comment. So. And I see Liz Rice in the call. Thank you. Um, anything to say around Argo GRPC? No, I'm gonna get I'm gonna get back on GRPC. If anyone would like to be interviewed, ping me, please. Um, Argo is still a, working. We have a lot of users of GRPC, so there's a spoil for choice for people to interview. So. <laughs> Lovely. And uh, Harry to you. Oh uh, yeah, so uh, as you may already notice in the Slack channel that Argo is working on their security issues and they have already public several uh, blocks. Deems actually help a lot here. Maybe Deem, you have more more information to add. Okay. Uh, nothing more than that. Uh, so we were working with them on their security posture, trying to get them to write things down, um, you know, enhance their processes a little bit and uh, ensure like, whatever they are doing is like visible, documented, and uh, so people can uh, go take a look and feel better that, you know, things are going on fine. And uh, if there is a, something that's getting, get, gets reported, then it gets worked on and things like that. So uh, I think they are, at some point when we feel comfortable, uh, we have to get them back, uh, reboot their process uh, for the graduation one more time and we probably have to uh you know into we have to figure out exactly what are the steps that we can grandfather from before and what else uh, do we need to do new nope that that sounds like it is all reasonable things so all right i'm gonna move us back over towards our graduation proposal for Spiffy's Fire, because I think we've got all of that team on the phone. Unless anybody had any questions, I didn't see anything in chat. I saw a note around um, like custodian status, like things are moving, hooray. 
All right, seeing none, hearing none, I'm going to pass to Andres and uh, the Swifties Fire team. Thank you, Amy. Hello, everybody. So, yes, Spiff Inspire, we are proposing the projects deferring to you for graduation. It's It's been quite a journey. The projects entered CNCF in 2017, moved to incubation in the start of 2020. There's an, a lot of numbers you can see in death stats on how the projects have grown in so many different areas, but a couple of things to, to point out, and I think this has been, well, afforded all by, by the CNCF of a project started by few that that's so a, a big gap in the ecosystem has really harnessed a lot of different vendors, some many of them like fierce competitors. And we established a thriving community, a multi-vendor effort. We have uh, reconstituted uh, successfully the steering committee, what was formerly the Spiffy Technical Steering Committee that were the initiated early believers to the project. Most of those members uh, have transitioned and we have new folks in there. At a technical standpoint, it's, it's just really amazing to see the robustness and the stability that, that the projects has, have achieved and also the, the breadth and depth and integrations of other ecosystem projects that have picked it up, ranging from a number of the popular service meshes, gRPC, native capabilities into cloud providers, EKS service mesh being one, several others. The end user community uh, has also, uh, well, quite of uptake in the end, while well, everything we do is, is in service of making organizations more secure. So that's been really rewarding and, and fascinating to see. Since incubating, we, we also transitioned what was originally the spiffy days, our, our gathering and hangout into a co-located event at KubeCon that has been successful by many measures. It's been very well attended. There's been great participation again from end users uh, speaking about their usage as scenarios and outcomes that Spiffy Inspire have enabled for them. So yeah, I, I think judging from our own evaluation of, of the rubric for graduation, we were there. We think we meet or exceed all, all the categories we since since incubation justin cormack thank you for graciously leading the due diligence for us we went and conducted a third party audit we acted upon the findings of, of that audit and we made the project even more water, watertight than it was we have written book uh, that gathered members from uh, the community at large uh, thank you emily fox congratulations on on setting now the talk uh, you participated in that book. You were a tremendous contributor to it. Uh, it's called Solving the Bottom Turtle. You'll find the link in the incubation proposal, sorry, in the graduation proposal. So yes, it's it's just been like proliferating and uh, growing. We expect to continue to grow. That's well in affordance of, of being a CNCF project. And with that, I well, we have the rest of the steering committee members here. I don't know if anyone wants to add on anything to that, but pass it on to the talk. Thanks, Dems. Hearts too. And thanks, Justin, for the link to the book. All right. Any of the other, um, uh, Steering committee folks want to be able to weigh in. Andrew Jessup, come on in. You're totally muted and they don't know how. How's that? Any better? You are now unmuted. Go ahead. Okay, great. I also don't know what camera I'm speaking to. So <laughs> choose one, um, anyone. <laughs> uh, you know, I, I, I didn't have a lot to add other than uh, what Andres said. Uh, this is, uh, uh, you know, this, we're really excited by the momentum and, uh, uh, you know, I think as well as uh, the sort of the, the sponsoring institution behind this 
um, you know, merged into, into uh, was, was acquired by Hewlett Packard Enterprise. You know, what we've ended up doing is uh, shifting the, the governance and the maintainership into a, you know, a, what, I, what I like to think is a very, uh, uh, a very diverse set of maintainers represented by, you know, a large number of different vendors. And so we've been able to, you know, gain a, you know, a true neutrality there, which I think has been uh, very welcome and, uh, and impressive. So, um, but yeah, otherwise, uh, what Andrea said, uh, happy to be here. I'll actually pass to Justin Cormack first, seeing nobody else kind of like putting their hands up here. Um, I mean, I think that, um, yeah, I, I remember, I remember going to, I think one of the first public spiffy meeting at KubeCon in, uh, I don't know, tech, uh, Austin maybe, um, in a, in a bar with, with carry with, um, PowerPoint karaoke. Um, and I think it's, it's, it's come a really long way since then. Um, and, um, yeah, I think it's really interesting how it's built a community through very different governance structures, very different, um, people, um, um it was you know kind of through i remember when i remember talking to the team when the acquisition of stara happened to find out what I, what, what hp was going to do and if this was going to be a positive move for the project and and what was going to happen because it was still you know kind of a bit unclear then but i think that um really the the project's shown that they can work across the you know across security um you know, with security people across all sorts of different things. I think that the book has been really helpful for helping people understand the shape of the problem they're trying to address and what the, um, and these kind of, these kind of bootstrapping problems um, and identity problems are really hard to help people understand. And I think those kinds of, that, that kind of thing has been incredibly helpful in, in helping people discuss you know, discuss these kinds of security problem in the, in the community. And, um, and so I think that, that, that kind of educational material is a real lesson to, to other projects that it's, it's fun to do. And I, I was amazed by the way they did that book in, was it two weeks? Uh, um, as an immersive sprint based process, which was really interesting and, um, it worked really well. So I, I think that, um, yeah, it's been it's been kind of really interesting watching this watching this journey. Yeah, book sprints that was the one. Yes, I'd love to try it on some other things. Yeah, you know, in in hindsight, absolutely, it's a lot of the struggle was like, how do we how do we solve the problem people think they have in order to have a chance to explain the, the one they don't so yeah i think thinking outside the box well the book is one of the many examples of well bringing plural views and thinking outside of the box let's try different things let's pull pull folks in and uh let's cater to the different ways that people consume content pay attention learn about things Thank you. And thanks for, for your involvement in the project. And, and we're continuing to look for it. Still ways to go. Dems, so I see you going off mute. Uh, hi. So uh, when I was going through the graduation proposal, one thing kind of like struck me was uh, you have a maturity framework for sub projects. How is that um, you know, uh, working out? And how is it helping you progress? Because I haven't seen other people do that. Yes. So we, we, just to, Dems, we have had other projects do that. We've actually asked for it at various times because sometimes it's been unclear to people, particularly around graduation, which parts of the project they should consider production ready when there are some right. projects right. that are right. clearly not, so, you know, it's all very experimental. So it's not um, unprecedented. Yeah, they have they put the label by themselves without us telling them to basically, right? <laughs> That's a great observation. 
I think it's it's not something new. There's definitely prior art. I think there are a couple motivations why we did that. While we maintain Spire as the reference implementation of Spiffy, it's not the only implementation of the project. We also maintain a, a number of language bindings. Uh, we have Go Spiffy, Java Spiffy. There are a few others. Uh, since incubation, we also folks have an interest in building systems on top of Spire, uh, have a Spire Federation controller for multiple trust domains. Uh, Brandon Lum and Marius from IBM uh, started that project. And it was all at a time that we were dealing with growing pains. Our the, the bandwidth of attention of our maintainers was uh, pegging. Uh, we were we were uh, treading water, and we had kind of had this official projects, and we try to take care with people building things around us, best effort. But we were doing a great service, so rescinding a little bit control, but like stipulating a framework for people to be able to develop these things on their own as long as there's proper representation of well is this fully supported by the project officially or well it's nascent effort and it's somewhat experimental so that is part of the motivation there um, projects that have a maturity label right now are the language bindings as well as torniac and it's an ongoing effort. Uh, there's a number of things in the Spiffy Inspire ecosystem that we haven't vetted against it, but we're hoping to accomplish that. Hopefully that like shares a little bit of the rationale behind it. Uh, sounds good, thank you. So you touched on something else that I also wanted to poke at, which is uh, where do you see yourself uh, you know, post-graduation? Like, or what, what are your aspirations as a community? What do you? What else do you want to do, essentially? That's that's a great question. I'll take a stab. Uh, I'm sure Andrew has plenty of of perspective on it that I I think would be beneficial for the for the group to hear. I think it's very important as a core infrastructure project that people are considering trustworthy. That no one running Spire in production experiences an outage because of Spire. So reliability, stability, making sure that the project is watertight is going to continue to be a priority for the project. And number two, it's growing integrations, ensuring that the top 50 or top N open source projects support native Spiffy authentication, and that we start uh, bridging uh, or, and debalkanizing pockets of infrastructure that are fragmented. The dream is, is a world of secretless authentication across the board end to end. Andrew? I don't know how you're muted again. Uh, I, <laughs> double muted, sorry about that folks. Um, I'm gonna look at this camera too, that's probably better. Uh, I think Andrew just gave a great summary. I don't have a ton to add to it. You know the project. You know we've tried to keep the 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 core uh, the core problem that we're trying to solve, you know, well bounded and well scoped. Um, so there certainly will be you know as always ongoing efforts on on stability and maintainability and uh, uh, and ease of integration. Um, in terms of growth going forward, you know as Andres mentioned, uh, we'd love to see more uh, and richer upstream integrations, uh, native integrations into things like, say, secrets managers, identity management platforms, and so forth. Um, and uh, uh, you know, a lot of that you you see captured in the you know early incubating projects, uh, or, you know, within the within the Spiffy ecosystem itself. Um, and then you know, I think your success for us, you know, in the next say five years would be to see more uh, of the industry align around the Spiffy APIs, uh, to align around, you know, particular things like the workload of Federation API, um, to allow, as Andres mentioned, you know, a kind of debalkanization of workload identity and to start to allow greater interoperability between the you know, different platforms and solution sets. So uh, we think, you know, that uh, graduation will, will, will facilitate the momentum that we already have there. 
last trailing thought is, well, all without losing sight of our values and well, democratizing the technology, like make, make it something that it's in a direction that set it and forget it. And make sure that it's consumable by the industry at, at large, not just like an expert level system. What other questions, Dems? Dems, you can also feel free to pass to anybody else. Well, as a resident uh, security folks, like I, we should call on Liz and Emily. <laughs> Emily can be called on Liz only if she'd like to. Okay. Um, so I can say that in the years that I've been working with the Spiffy and Spire folks, both with the book as well as with the security assessment and security tag, they've all been very security forward in the design and the thoughtfulness of the product, as well as the documentation and ensuring that it's approachable to the vast majority of intended users and even the unintended users. We had some great conversations around how we can present material that reaches the most amount of people where they're at, especially for a very large um, project with a lot of complexity and its potential implementation, both within the specification as well as the reference implementation. And where this project sits within the ecosystem is it has a lot of potential different use cases. So I'm really proud of the work that the team has done and both their embodiment of security from that perspective, but as well as their commitment to diversity and inclusion within the community and the thoughtfulness and the language selection that they've been using throughout their um, progression from the security assessment when I first engaged all the way to today. A good and positive feedback note then. I, I will pitch really, really quickly. Um, yeah, I'll pop in a couple of minutes. Um, I, I think it's an awesome project and I'm only jumping in because because Dim's asked. <laughs> I think it's a really good project. I will say I have personally, and this is just personal, so it's anecdotal, I haven't seen it being used a huge amount amongst the end users that I've spoken with. That's just anecdote, and I haven't gone out to look for it. So that's my only kind of anecdote to add. But I do think it's a really solid project. Tell us who they are. We'll go after them. <laughs> that's, no, 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 no. Like the, you're just supposed to be able to like, hey, no, we know people using this in production. Part of the challenge is being able to like, I understand being able to find it. OK, thank you, Liz. Sure. Much appreciated. All right, any other questions, comments, overall thoughts? New TOC members, any other questions that you have around this? I see a, a good friend in the project, we call uh, Paul Holland uh, oh, yeah. from ARM. Oh. Uh, you know, uh, something that's been very encouraging for us has been see folks from problems that I would say are like the last mile beyond like outside just the, the last mile from like where we reach at and Parsec is, is a great example of expanding and extending like well a wire protocol and abstraction to hardware devices and it was a sign up like incorporating spiffy and that's been really, really encouraging. Well, knowing that we're directionally correct and that we've paid enough attention for people to seamlessly integrate and extend this, this interfaces and like tackle the problem at like different problems specific to particular industries. So this would be edge and IoT, which is some of the key use cases of, of Parsec. Paul is correcting the record here. Oh, I'm sorry. You, no, you, great. Go ahead. Come on in. 
I guess this brings us to the hard part. Uh, who's uh, willing to step up, step up and sponsor, right, Amy? <laughs> Yes, that, I mean, we seem to be hitting like kind of the end of questions here and the end of like the kind of just just kind of back and forth. Um, so you're right. This is the next part of being able to like come step in. Or other questions that we haven't gotten to. Question on sponsorship. I know why. Well, I'd spoken to a few of you as we were gearing up for this. Uh, could we have more than one sponsor, have them tag team it? Is that something common or typically not, not a practice? Um, I mean, yes, I would be highly in favor of that in large part because we've got kind of new folks on like TOC and being able to help them kind of walk through process in here um, separately. That also means if somebody gets overwhelmed or busy, then like there's somebody else be able to pull them across the line. So yeah, fun being able to have like pairs on this one. There's no prohibition against it. How's that? It helps. Thank you. No, that's fine. I mean, I'm in, I'm I'm happy to work on this with someone else if that's. I'm also happy for someone else to do the graduation as I did the incubation there. So, whatever anyone's. Dave, if you're willing to sponsor, I will be happy to assist you in that as my first one. That was Justin Cormack. So Dave, Dave is quiet in here. Justin Cormack and, and Emily would actually be a perfectly fine pairing. Uh, I typed in the chat. Oh, you typed in the yeah, chat. Yeah, okay, Dave was still in the chat. So. Ah, man, everybody in. Okay, fight for it. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, Emily probably shouldn't be the one being able to lead it simply because brand new and like the first time out. Like I wouldn't, I wouldn't do that to you. Um, but Justin, Dave, fight for it. I mean, I'll rephrase that and ask Justin if he wants to do every one of the reviews, or like you said, you know, if he wants to step back to the presentation. So it's it's your call, Justin. I I, I really don't mind. If, I, I I really don't mind to be honest. It's um, okay. Totally open. I way. believe what I just heard was um, Justin Cormack to lead, and then uh, both Dave and Emily to assist on like interviews and various other things in here to be able to like pull all of this together. Fair? Well, work it out. Yes, exactly. Okay, yeah. teamwork. Yeah. Yeah. Well done. Um, any other pieces that we needed to cover this morning? Yeah, on, on process. Uh, yes. Well, we, we have collected, well, we have collated a number of like public case studies uh, and public adopters. I know the process entails conducting private interviews. Do you need us to wire up those conversations for you? Or like, do you reach out directly to these organizations back channel and do the interview? How does this work? Uh, it can be either way. We can, we, we, we're happy. I mean, um, if you've got contact, that's often very helpful. If people want to come forward, that's also helpful. If we have people we want to talk to, we can do that. So it can be a mixture. We can talk about it offline. Okay, sounds good. All right, I have put the official note in chat. Um, excellent. Um, I think that closes us out on that. We've gone through our projects applying to move levels and we are now in the point of questions. Anything else that we can cover today? Well, we're at a timeline for conducting these interviews. I think that's a few weeks, three weeks, or like as long as it takes. Like we want to get good answers, right? Yeah, it's it's kind of it's hard to give an exact timeline because it depends on people's availability and scheduling and things. So um naturally so as long as it takes people to respond to emails i mean it, it's not a great timeline but it is true um if they have calendly it helps right <laughs> yes <laughs> it does <laughs> realize calendly was going to be like the internet main character um yeah in large part it really depends on being able to have people be responsive so the more that the project can help on people like end users and all of that being responsive the better 
Right on. Well, again, super stoked and, and fired up. Uh, hard to believe we made it this far, but well, we're looking at the evidence, so pretty cool. Yep, this is great. Uh, Justin, you also mentioned um, Contour might be coming up next. I just pinged me this morning, this morning or last night. Yeah. Okay. Okay. When I see that particular um, proposal come through, I will put it on the schedules. Um, like, we're kind of backed up on things for a bit. Like, I can't see that actually coming up before like this time next month. Um, and our next sandbox review is also an annual review meeting as well. So we should probably look towards like how we're going to deal with all of that. Just procedural notes. So. Mm -hmm. And also like upcoming things. Hooray, there's gonna be a sandbox meeting review. Hooray. That is uh, March 8th for anyone else on the call. Uh, Amy, the other one that I had uh, for yeah. you was uh, the, the TOC chosen seat nominations. Uh, what's- what, That what opens today, to today at uh, uh, noon. Pacific time that closes. Hold on, I've even gotten this written down. Um, the next piece around that one is going to be closing nominations close on um, February 22nd. That's TOC nomination. You're going to get a form at about noon today. Um, February 22nd through uh, March 8th, we've got that two week qualification period where both the TOC and the governing board vote. Um, we'll do a very short election from uh, March 8th, election opens. Um, pretty much noon that time. Uh, and then March 15th, election closes at 12 p.m. Pacific and results will be announced at that time. And March 18th, our new person is going to be joining us, so. So who's the existing person from the TOC? Ah. Sweet. <laughs> Elena, it's Elena, and, and we love Elena. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for your work with here, us. Uh, I know that you're probably not going to be standing again, so. Thank you, Amy. Yeah, I want to give other awesome folks an opportunity to stand and be elected. Thank you. Nope, that's wonderful. Um, yeah, only rules around that one are uh, Elena can nominate, but Elena can't vote. So, any other questions that I can help answer for folks? All right. Um, with no other questions, I will send all of you back into your day. It's good to see you, and congratulations to uh, Spiffy Spire for making it here. Well done. All right. Bye, all. Bye. Bye.